body butter you want it to be thick you want it to be creamy you want it to create that thick layer of moisture on your skin what's up my beautiful entrepreneurs let's talk about the most common mistake when making body butter this mistake can cost you cost on your body butter the consistency texture shelf life so many things can be attached to this one mistake when it comes to your body butter. I'm gonna share that mistake with you along with how to avoid that mistake and to make the perfect body butter when it comes to your formulation. Let's not waste any more time, let's get right into the video. So with this common mistake, the big thing is the consistency of your body butter is going to be messed up. Now, this has to do with adding in too much oil to your product. Now, when you're making your formula and you have a high percentage of oil, it can really mess with the consistency and not allow for the body butter to form those soft peaks that you're typically looking for in that thick consistency that you want for the body body butter. Body butter is typically going to be a thick moisturizer, is going to create a thick you know, barrier for your skin, is going to be slow absorbing and that's why it, it, is, it is so thick. So when you're adding in um, and when you're adding in the oil, it's going to take away um, from that aspect of it being very moisturizing. So what I went ahead and did is I made a formula adding in way too much of the oil to my body butter just to see what the um, body butter would come out like from adding in too much oil. I feel like a lot of people I have said, don't add too much oil to your body butter. And they're like, well, I want all of these great benefits to be within the body butter. I want it to have this. I want it to get rid of stress marks. I want it to, you know, there's so many different benefits that you're looking for. You're making your body butter. There's so many different ingredients that you can use instead to gain those same benefits that you're looking for that the body oil will give. But I'm gonna get into that a little bit later in the video. When it comes to the formula that I used for this experiment i just took my basic body butter formula and i went ahead and took out about um 10 percent from the shea butter i took about in uh six percent of the cocoa butter and i took out about another 10 percent from the coconut oil and with that i am using unfractionated coconut oil so it's going to be a harder coconut oil at room temperature so it still allowed the the overall body butter to have some firmness to it so i wanted to take out those firm aspects from the body butter and just add in oils to see how that will reflect in the actual body butter so i used sunflower oil and i also used sweet almond oil as my two oils for this but then you also want to remember that when you're adding in your fragrance oil when you're adding vitamin e or if you're adding in vitamin a um those are also going to be oil-based products you're still adding in an additional percentage when you're adding in those products as well so you have a lot of oil that's going on in this formula so when it comes to consistency after i've added everything in i went ahead and added in the um shea butter the cocoa butter and the coconut oil just so that everything can melt down now another mistake that a lot of people sometimes make is that they're going to add in the oils the sunflower oil and sweet almond oil after everything's cooled down and it's still too warm once you add in the cooled down oils it's going to make it firm up really quickly and you can start to see little flakes start to form inside of the um, oil once everything starts to mix up and you might start getting flakes within that and which will can also make it a little bit harder to whip because you start having chunks inside of the overall base that you have. So it would be a good idea to allow everything to cool down to be around the same temperature so that when you're adding it, it's not conflicting in temperature and making the body butter, um, the body butter that's all melted start to flake initially. So after everything has melted down, I realized as I'm trying to as I'm trying to whip it, that the 
butter doesn't really want to whip very much like it doesn't want to um, get those soft peaks I had to put it in the freezer over and over and over again and scrape down the sides just to kind of get that um, get, the, get the proper texture for the body butter to whip and I just couldn't get those immediate soft peaks that you are normally looking for and that's a really big thing especially when we're talking about consistency for your body butter that's going to be messed up because it's not gonna have that firm soft texture that you're typically looking for get me wrong it was a beautiful like feel and a nice body butter but you have to remember and think about the shelf life of your product when you're adding in too much oil it's going to drop down the shelf life because the oils will go rancid quicker and you're not going to have that same shelf life that you normally would when you're adding in those firmer butters and other oils as well so you want to be careful with the amount of oils because you don't want your product to go bad sooner when it oils go rancid it's a terrible smell and you just don't want that to be mixed up with your body butter so now a huge thing when it comes to adding in too much oil into your body butter is going to be the cost now this is about your business and about having a cost effective product and when you're adding in too much oil oil can be very very expensive comparatively to your shea butter cocoa butter cocoon butter whatever it is that you're using inside of your formula um, oil can be very expensive comparatively so when you're adding too much of that in there you can really start to rise the prices of your product think about why the oil is going to be more expensive there's a lot more process that goes into creating the oils they're being cold pressed they're being there's more processing that's going on with the oils so yeah the pricing is going to be higher when it comes to your oils so it's better to have the products of your shea butter cocoa butter and like cocoon butter in order to have like those benefits now i did mention before that there are some other products that you can use that will still give you the same benefits because i know a lot of times you're just adding in the oil just so that you can have additional benefits and there's so many different ingredients that you can use in order to replace within your body butter there is you know mango butter you have avocado butter there is coffee butter you have um cocoon butter and those all have really great benefits of all also helping to reduce redness they also help with uh adding more moisture i'll have a few of them linked down below as well so that you can check those out because there are really great options that you can use that will still gain have those same benefits adding in too much oil to your body butter can also take away the absorption of the body butter now as i mentioned before when it comes to body butter you want it to be thick you want it to be creamy you want it to create that thick layer of moisture on your skin so that it can continue to moisturize and it's not a fast absorbing absorbing uh, moisturizer that's the whole point of a body butter it's not supposed to be a light moisturizer so the absorption rate will go down when it comes to the oil because it will make it absorb faster into your skin it won't have that thick layer um, it will take away that main benefit and it will kind of defeat the purpose of you saying that it's a body butter because it's not going to have the same effect that a typical body butter would have as far as moisturization goes so you want to make sure that you are adding in in the ingredients that is necessary to still have that thickness and have that buttery feel when it comes to making the product as I was making it as well I could realize that the oil there was too much oil within the product and I know that if I were to allow the that product to sit it would melt so quickly because of how much oil is in the product it wouldn't be able to be a stable product and that's just not good for your overall business you want you to you want to have a stable product that should be able to ship out no matter what time of the year it is i know that sometimes when it comes to your body butter another issue is having it uh, melt so much during the summertime and when you have a body butter like this with too much oil you are going to run into that that problem on 10 is going to be even worse with a formula like this because there is way too much oil 
So overall, it's really important to really strike the right balance between your butters and oils within your formula. Now, if you've seen any of my formulation videos in the past, then you would know that a lot of times I have the butters be the highest percent of my formula. So a good rule of thumb is to make sure that your softer butters are gonna be 50 to 60% of your overall formula. And that's gonna be your shea butters, mango butters, coffee butter, whatever it is that you're using in that sort of that softer medium uh, butter. That also includes your uh, coconut oil as well because due to it still having uh, firmness to it, you are going to wanna use that because it's not gonna take away from your overall um, body butter feel for your formula. When it comes to your hard butters, you want that to be around 10 to 15% of your formula. This is really important because your beeswax, the cocoa butter, cocoon butter, all of those butters are going to add an additional firmness and it's at a, a low percent, but it's really important because it gives a level of firmness to your formula um, without being overly hard and not being too soft from your soft to medium butters that are at such a high percentage in your formula. So I like to keep the cocoa butter and then have a have a beeswax to pair along with it to keep that to keep that firmness and for it to still have those great benefits of helping your skin as well. Now overall I really do like this formula because it's really nice it's really really soft but it's a little bit too soft from a business aspect of you actually selling this body butter. It's going to be way too loose. The oil within this formula is going to make it melt really really quickly and it's not going to last very long especially if you live in a hot climate like Texas. This product is not going to last very long and all of the hard work that you did to try and get any peaks within this um, process are going to go away. The other thing that I did notice a lot within this formula is that it was very, very greasy. And this can be another problem that a lot of people do have when it comes to making body butter. If you're having issues figuring out how to get rid of greasiness in your formula, check out this video here where I show you four ways to get rid of greasiness in your formula. And I'll catch you in the next one.